Closet, a Todd Mills Mystery. Book One, author R.D. Zimmerman, publisher, Scribble Pub, Minneapolis, Minnesota, narrator, Eric Ost. Chapter Eight, Detective Steve Rollins sat at his desk in the bullroom, a large space filled with about eight other desks, and stared at an intimidating pile of unfiled papers. He was trying to ascertain just how and where he was supposed to begin filing all this, when suddenly someone pushed the pile to the side. He lunged forward and wrapped his arms around the stack as he tried to keep his precious mess from dumping all over. Hey, watch it, snapped Rollins as several pieces of paper slid off his desk and floated down to the linoleum floor. This is important crap, all my cases for the last month. Oh, we're letting them go. Rollins reached down, grabbed the papers, and slapped them back on top of the heap, then looked over at Donna Lewis, who'd perched on the corner of his desk. He always had trouble reading her, this woman with the short hair and pale skin. She was just so steady, or so cold, so Minnesotan. And now as she sat there rolling a pencil back and forth in her hand, he couldn't read her, couldn't tell exactly what was on her mind. Nor, for that matter, did he have any idea what she was talking about. Who's that? asked Rollins, grabbing a file out of the middle of the pile and placing it to the side. We're a tad buried under these days. The TV dude, our Mr. Mills. What? snapped Rollins, unable to hide his disbelief. Lewis shrugged. His lawyer was in again this morning. She spent a couple of hours with Mills and then went to see the judge. Apparently she came up with a series of alibis. Series, said Rollins, sliding the entire stack of papers over to the other side of his desk. What the hell does that mean? It means his lawyer couldn't pinpoint any one alibi to cover him for the entire time frame, so instead she patched together two or three. Lewis shrugged, and apparently the judge bought it. Oh, come on. You're shitting me. Nope, replied Lewis, jabbing her short, sharp fingernail into the pencil's eraser. That fucker should be locked up. Sorry, he'll be out within the hour. That's crap. You know as well as I do that he's getting off because he's famous. Rollins shook his head. If we're really letting him go, then I'm going to personally check out each and every one of those alibis. With a sly grin, Lewis asked, So what's the matter with you and Todd Mills? His type bothers me, you know that. Rollins leaned back in his chair. Besides, you heard Mills yourself. Those two guys had a fight and Mills got violent. Real violent. Shit. You saw all that broken crap too. Mills said he didn't hit Carter, but who's to say? We should check with Carter's employer. See if Carter said anything at work. Or maybe someone noticed he was limping or something. Maybe he told a fellow worker he'd been threatened. Who knows? We've got to talk with them. Is the coroner's report in yet? As of about 20 minutes ago, all they could be certain of was that Michael Carter had suffered multiple stab wounds. It appeared that his heart was penetrated by a 10-inch knife, she added. The coroner did say that so far, there wasn't any trace of semen on or in Carter. No anal penetration, either. Carter's pants were down when his body was found, but so far they've detected no sign of any sexual contact or activity. Well, maybe they'll find something else. Like I said, how do we know Mills didn't take a couple of swipes at Carter before he busted all those fucking dishes? We don't. Not yet, anyway. Exactly. Trust me, something's wrong here. Among other things, there's still no sign of that cub's hat. Rollins thought for a minute and then added, But even if Mills didn't do anything the night before last, he could have come back last night. You know, like maybe he was still pissed, and so he came back and lit into him. I mean, shit, there wasn't a forced entry at Carter's house. All the windows and doors are still secure, so either it was someone Carter knew or someone who had a key. Right. Okay, okay. So we have to find out who has a key besides Todd. Maybe the upstairs tenants. Uh, maybe a neighbor. Speaking of which, be sure and get copies of all of Mill's keys before we let him go. Already did, replied Rollins, searching his desk. Two sets. Oh, they're here somewhere. Yep. He pulled the shiny keys from beneath a pad of paper. Oh, and what about family? Doesn't he have a sister here in town? Or what about a cleaning service? They'd probably have keys, too. Right. Lewis rubbed her forehead, bit her bottom lip. Uh, we have a complete search warrant, so we still have to get him over to Hennepin County Medical. 
I'd like that done before he leaves this morning. Meaning, I'm the one to maintain the so-called chain of evidence. If you wouldn't mind. But why me? Because you're a guy. Lewis went over to her desk, which was only a few feet away, and picked up a sexual assault kit. It, here you go, buddy. Have fun. Oh, brother, said Rollins, shaking his head. Do you think I should get a gay nurse to help me? Someone flaming, perhaps? Actually, I, I don't think you want to intimidate him. Not right now, and I bet anyone gay, let alone a queen, would make someone like him squirm. She stared at Rollins, looking him right in the eye as she said, So, uh, what's your gut telling you on this one? Not missing a beat, Rollins replied. Most crimes are crimes of passion, right? So I'll bet it was a love fight between two homos, one of them horribly closeted and paranoid. A fight Todd Mills won. Maybe. Time will tell. She pointed to the stack of papers on his desk and said, Rollins, you're a mess. You know it? you really got to clean all this up. I mean, how can you find anything? I got my own system. You're helpless. I ain't no interior decorator, if you know what I mean. No shit. Listen, I'll go get mails and then you can take them over to the hospital. Uh, we'll continue with the search as soon as you're done. Lewis advised. Just remember, be real friendly, no matter how guilty you think he is. Be real nice to him. Keep him talking. I love dirt. I'm serious. You're his new best friend. Don't worry, I'm good at this shit. I know. He chuckled briefly, so... But as soon as she turned away, Steve Rollins' smile vanished. He watched Lewis disappear, eyeing her anxiously, until she slipped out of the room and down the hall. He sat there for a few minutes, the thoughts rushing and sliding through his mind. Screw these papers. Fuck the filing. He just prayed she didn't know. There was no way she could, was there? No. He thought replaying not only this conversation, but every moment, every word since last night, he, he thought back on it all. From the time they arrived at the scene of the crime to the interrogation of Todd Mills. No, no fucking way she could have picked up on it. He played it perfectly, no. Oh. But if she or anyone else here on the force ever suspected, even hinted. Right, he thought, reaching around and grabbing his dark leather jacket from the back of his chair. He was going to have to forget about everything else that lay buried on this stack of papers. All the cases that were begging for attention. Even the ones on the way to court. Screw them all. He thought. Nothing was more important than making sure no one found out about his connection to Michael Carter. A Gay Mysteries Audiobooks I think it is easy to hate a label, but a face humanizes the word. So this effort is twofold. To offer comfort to those like myself that your world didn't end because you don't fit into the view of acceptable society on both sides. And in hopes of helping those with family that are LGBTQ, that it doesn't mean we are aliens from the child they once knew, reassure them so they can maybe be supportive at the same time, being true to their values.